Hello everyone and welcome to re-entry. In this video I'm going to walk you through a couple of the key concepts when it comes to my first VR implementation for uh, re-entry. Uh, this is the preliminary support uh, that some of you might have been playing in Mercury and Gemini uh, but now also available in Apollo. Uh, right now I'm sitting inside the Apollo CSM uh, as you might recognize. Uh, in uh, VR. Uh, I've taken the, the preliminary implementation that you've been seeing in Mercury and Gemini and applied it to Apollo. Uh, the key thing with Apollo is that it's a very complicated beast to render. There's uh, thousands of switches and things you can interact with uh, in addition to a very complex uh, scenery when it comes to bo both the Earth and the Moon uh, to render, especially in VR. So there's quite a lot of performance optimizations that I've been doing, uh, but also still need to do. So keep in mind that this is still the preliminary support that you've seen in Mercury and Gemini, but applied for Apollo. Uh, the major blocker for Apollo is, as mentioned, performance and rendering. So we will need to tweak around a little bit with the graphics settings and the Steam graphics settings uh, to get it to render correctly. Uh, but once you've done that, you should be able to get uh, some decent frame rent rates. Um, however, uh, the main uh, focus on VR uh, will be after uh, the 1.0 release, I think, uh, for release 1.2. Uh, this is where I will fully go in and focus on VR. And I'll redesign the menus and I'll uh, redesign uh, some of the key concepts as well. But I want to invite all of you into this journey of VR de uh, development for uh, re-entry, uh, which means that uh, things that you suggest, th things that you see work in other games uh, that might uh, have a place in re-entry, uh, reach out to me and I'll try to see what I can do to implement them or add them to my to-do list or, uh, you know, keep them in back of he my head when I try to design in uh, interfaces and ways to interact with these panels. Uh, but in the current imp implementation, uh, you can see that uh, you have two hands, uh, one for the left, which is side to the left motion controller, and one for the right. Uh, the first thing you notice is that uh, you might see some text in front of you, and there's some user interface uh, tied to the left hand. This is used to kind of interact with the user interface that you use to in the game. You can toggle this on and off using the thumbstick button on the left uh, hand. So if I click this, you can see that it's uh, now hidden. This also toggles the in-game button, such as you can see toggle COAS up here. And you can toggle this on and off using the same button. The other thing is the uh, mission text. So currently I loaded up the power descent and landing uh, mission uh, in VR. And uh, the first thing that mission control is saying is that uh, scenario, power descent and landing is just uh, title text basically. But if this would be an academy or a mission, then uh, the mission text will be shown up here in addition to on this user interface. So you can basically choose what you want to use. You can uh, toggle a laser pointer on the right hand uh, by using uh, the right thumbstick button. This toggles this on and off. And you can hit Roger here if you want to get rid of this text. You can also use it to switch between different cameras or jump into the Luna module. Uh, however, uh, the mission text is quite common. So I've added a method for you to hit Roger using the controller. So you can see the subtitles here now. And I can hit right, uh, move the right thumbstick in the right direction and it's just going to hit Roger. That basically removes this text. Uh, the other thing is uh, those white dots that you can see on your hands. These are your collision points, and this is the way that you interact with, uh, with different controllers on the panels. Uh, I've received some feedback there that they're quite hard to use, uh, so I'm uh, looking at ways to redesign this or figure out other ways to do this or maybe make the collider quite a lot bigger more on a hand thing and then figure out a way to uh, correctly select which switch you want to interact with but for now you move the uh, collider 
into the switch that you want to interact with and then you can hold the trigger button and once you hold this inside uh, it will remember what switch you're interacting with and then you can move it down uh, move your hand down or up to kind of reposition the switch if I now move my hands quite a far away from it but still holding the trigger in I can still interact with the same button because it's, it remembers what you're grabbing um, right I'm going to set this back to IMU and then I'm going to take the uh, translation controller I'm going to set this one to off and I'm going to leave the rest as is so this is basically how you interact with the cockpit uh, another thing is that I've now made it possible for you to quickly move the cameras inside of the cockpit by using the left thumbstick. So if I move the left thumbstick to the right direction, it will go to the next camera. And if I move it to the left, it will go back to the previous. So this way you can quickly move around inside of the cockpit and uh, reconfigure the panels without having to bring up the, the menu here. Uh, another thing is that you can see that there's a mission pad there. This mission pad can be grabbed, so if I press the grab button, you can grab something. And if I move my hand in there and I grab this one, you can see that I now hold this in my hand. And I can release it somewhere and it starts to spin. Uh, this is one way to kind of uh, grab stuff. You can do the same for the, uh, for the TC50, the, the media player that you can toggle. But I also made it possible for you to use the X button on the left uh, controller to kind of just always spawn it into your hand. And if you place it, you can uh, press X again and it will stick to the exact location that uh, you left it at without having any gravity effects to it. This way allows me to just hit X. I don't need to uh, hold the grab button or anything. It's just attached to my hand no matter where I am, and I can move it around. And then I can, for example, move the camera and I can take a look at the mission pad. I can go through the tech lists that you would do in real life. Using the laser pointer, I can interact with this panel. And uh, you can see that I've added a new uh, tab here called VR. And this allows you to change time scale. Uh, it allows you to also move uh, a switch between the, the views uh, and perform mission commands such as radio check, open up the burn planners, uh, a request tie, uh, send, stuff like that for a lunar module. So it's just a kind of uh, an interface for those who are in VR and uh, still wishes to use kind of this type of user interface instead. By using this X toggle, if I leave it for example here, you can see that it's basically now uh, stuck in uh, in this position and it kind of looks like it's stuck into this assembly and this way you can kind of just uh, move this into places as you work inside of the cockpit to perform stuff. Uh, I can all for example go into checklists and then I can uh, use the trigger button to drag this up and down, check what checklist I want to go through, you have the launch preparations, you have some insertion checks, all those that you are used to go into one of them you can see that you can read the checklist you can hit back to maneuver this as you're used to uh, if i for example now want to perform uh, any checklist so for example i'm going to just uh, choose a random one uh, let's pretend that i'm going to do boost i can go into the boost checklist i can leave it up here if i want or i can just uh, move it into my hand Remember that if you press X, it will just snap into your hand wherever it is. And if I now hit run, uh, I've seen that quite a lot of uh, you have requested this feature. Uh, so I've finally added kind of the same uh, user interface that you use to when you're running through checklists. And you have Pro to proceed uh, with this. And let's see, uh, Pro, uh, Verify Clock is running. This one, here we go. And you can see that this one works. I'm just gonna see if it highlights a switch somewhere. Probably this one. And you can see that it's now waiting for me to set the top jet to, to up. I can now move my hand in here 
and uh, move it manually, or I can use the laser pointer to interact with switches. There we go. Show you this again. Or I can uh, go ahead and move my hand in there and move them up manually. Uh, I can also clear this one. Uh, let me see. Uh, there we go. And uh, if I now load up the Luna module, I hit back, Luna module. Right, this is what's already in there. So command module, Luna module. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm just going to move this one uh, away. So as you've seen, uh, I can now move the camera inside of the cockpit and I can use the user interface toggle to uh, interact with these uh, onboard things. For example, toggle call us, we'll move this one in place. Uh, you have uh, toggle seats, we'll remove the crew and the seats. And then you have the jukebox. You can see that the jukebox is here. And uh, if I now grab this one like that, uh, you can interact with this one as well in VR. Show and hide, uh, hide the user interface, hit play to play some music. I'm not going to do that now. And basically just have a look at it if you want. It's kind of cool. Um, okay. Uh, another thing is the optics and to be able to interact with the optics you will need to uh, move some of the switches so i put the mode to manual i'm going to set the speed to medium i'm going to slave it to the sextant there we go and uh, then you can move your hand inside of uh, the scope you wish to uh, interact with and then hit the trigger button this will show the uh, scope in full screen inside of VR and no matter where you look uh, it will still kind of just look in the direction of uh, the scope and then you can use the default binding to kind of move around inside of the scope and to exit this one uh, you can hit B to return to the cockpit on the right controller uh, to be able to press things on the keyboard uh, uh, or on the disk, I mean, uh, you can, let me just uh, get rid of this one. Uh, you can basically just move your finger into it. This is a little bit hard to do, so I usually just use the laser pointer. Uh, but once I've redesigned this collider uh, to only, as you can see, if you move it to a button, it's uh, not able to decide which button you're actually interacting with. I can hit verb. Three, seven, and so on. Reset. Verb. Three, seven. And then if you use a laser pointer, verb three, seven, enter, uh, one, five, for example, enter. And uh, this is much simpler when you work with keyboards and things that are uh, very close with each other. But this is, of course, something I'm working on. I just wanted to highlight that using this button presses on keyboards is a little bit hard right now. But use the laser pointer if you can. And of course, by uh, with training, you will be able to easily use the finger on this one as well. But it doesn't really make much sense because I'm going to redesign this pretty soon anyways. Uh, if I now move over here, you can see that there's uh, some things that you might want to interact with it interact with when it comes to kind of selectors. Same principle applies. You can see that the hand uh, changes this uh, pose, and if I uh, hold the trigger button, you can see that I can now rotate these things as you would do in real life. Uh, I can hit B on the keyboard still to kind of toggle the view selector that you've been looking at in this video so far. Uh, I should probably have uh, removed that initially. I'll try to remember that for the next time. Uh, okay, 
Um, I think that this covers mostly uh, how you interact with panels in VR. Uh, remember that you can still use um, the keyboard uh, mostly for a lot of things uh, in VR um, as well. Uh, for example, uh, right now, these hand controllers does not yet work. I'm going to add support for them in a uh, patch very soon. Uh, they work in Gemini and in Mercury, but I haven't applied it to Apollo yet. But uh, the principle will be that you can grab this uh, joystick and you can uh, use the motion controller to navigate uh, or change attitude of the spacecraft. And then the same, but for translational control and maybe even abort modes. Uh, all right. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'll follow up with more videos on VR uh, as I make progress with new uh, features. And then uh, in the next video, I'm going to focus on the more graphical aspects on setting VR up, enabling it, and then some performance and uh, graphics tweaking tips and tricks that you can uh, do to, to improve rendering here. Uh, but keep in mind that Apollo, uh, especially the command module, will require quite a lot of uh, hardware to be able to render correctly relative to Mercury and Gemini. Uh, the Luna module is a little bit simpler and uh, I can actually jump into the Luna module just to show it off. Uh, VR, uh, switch to LM, there we go. And uh, you can use, uh, by the way, uh, Y on the controller to, to uh, let's see, there we go, there it's loaded, uh, to reset the camera position. So if I look in any direction, you can see that the camera position can be reset. Uh, I'm running this game on a uh, GeForce 2070 Super. Uh, I've set the graphics to minimum, uh, as you can see on kind of the lighting here, um, because uh, I'm recording uh, the VR session as well as rendering in VR, which means that my computer is basically running at full speed right now. But the same principles applies. You can interact with uh, different things here if you want to. Uh, just as you're used to, the same with the computers, and the same principle applies uh, when it comes to, for example, this uh, mission pad. You can set it every, anywhere you want and, and work with it. Uh, if I now go back to the CM uh, and uh, I take this mission pad, and then I toggle the laser pointer and uh, I open up the CSM burn planner, for example, this one will now open up the SPS burn planner for uh, uh, creating these different burns as you used to. Uh, this is the same tool as you've seen before, but in a more of a VR friendly format. Uh, I've added uh, some interfaces when it comes to inputting stuff, for example, face. If I now press this one, you will see that uh, a number keyboard is uh, visible and uh, let's say that I want to have a burn at phase 67. I can just do that and the delta V should be at 79 feet per second and I want the burn to be prograde. I hit calculate. I will get all the detail uh, and information of this one uh, once it's done with the calculation and I can hit execute to uh, upload a pad into the computer there we go and I can close this one by using this and you can see that now I received the mission command Pacific 9 time of ignition is 84 hours 11 minutes 51 seconds with a delta V of 79 feet per second prograde and you should be able to see that on verb 37 enter 30 there we go we should see the similar uh, information that we have uh, inserted All right, so this basically covers uh, VR for Apollo. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of these new features is also available in Mercury and Gemini as well. Uh, so feel free to jump into your favorite uh, spacecraft in VR, uh, play around with it and uh, provide me with feedback, suggestions and uh, uh, things to improve, bugs to fix, and stuff like that, so I can add them to my backlog as I work with this VR implementation for re-entry. So, once again, thank you for watching.